as Moses likes to put it. So Halsey. let's head over to our caster, Scrawny and Lowey. What do you think about Halsey? It I sound, mean, sounds like a refreshing mint to put into your mouth. Yeah, I mean, not Jason's best work, um, <laughs> but the bar's low anyways. <laughs> Former coach of a liege. It looks like being bald is contagious. <laughs> Complexity and heroic lock and horns and a best of one to go 2-0. Who could have thunk it? Of course, Complexity opening up versus a regional matchup of Pain earlier today. Heroic, it was the big one, right? The upset over phase. That's why we're all hyped on heroic juice at the moment. And uh, Vertigo, an interesting map because we've seen, of course, a little bit of Vertigo from both these squads as of late. Complexity versus Furia. Uh, heroic versus Eternal Fire. Mm -hmm. And so the game tape's out there. I wouldn't call it the best map for either team, but that's the nature of the best of one. Can Complexity come in cold, all things considered? Skipping the first stage of the Major, and controversially, because the America's team in Furia, who beat them at the RMR, had to come in at the opening stage. Complexity get this free ticket to top 16. That was a big talking point, and now they've got to prove that it was well-deserved. Right now? They didn't have the retro jerseys ready, so they had to get those ready. That's why they gave them the spot. Nice oh double my nade. God. That's the frag. Yeah, JT. Imagine running into a bowling ball. You'd never beat Mario. Leash ends up catching Shush 2 on the fallback, so this is looking good for complexity. A tantalizing 5v3 retake. There's a frag grenade for Nerts to try and do some damage here. There's a kit, of course, on JT. He who threw those nades and God. Damn, complexity coming through in this post player. Woo, it's go. a flawless pistol for NA. Yes, it is. <laughs> for NA, yes, it is. And South Africa, of course. And uh, a little bit of Norway. Throw it in there. Yep. But most importantly, Jason Lake. And I think there's actually a heroic watch party in Copenhagen right now. Yes, sir. I don't know how many there are in the city right now, but that's one of the ones I've heard about. So shout out to you guys. At Got the McKellar, watch. if I'm not mistaken. Oh, McKellar. Great bar. Great logo. Great logo. Quintessentially Danish uh, brewer. Okay, so complexity. Well, we saw the strength versus pain. They're playing together. The leash is going crazy. And Grim, I think, stepped up massively. So Ooh. those are a few things to look for. Trade from the grave here from Halzer Molly. Nothing. Test test. And kicks in. In with the Mac 10s. So that high horse, the complexity we're hoping to ride into round two, just had its legs taken out from beneath it. What do they have to work with for the retake? A liege hanging onto the smoke grenade, but met by another. Make that two. Refresh smoke wall. Inerts. It's a long hunt. Ooh. Now he's taking a not so fun fight. <laughs> it's just about Indiana Jonesing from cover to cover to get close enough for the MAC 10 to be useful. But uh, also just denying them from exiting B. So, yeah. sorry, uh, Corey. It was nice while it lasted. Heroic getting right up in their grills with the MAC 10s. Nice charge behind the fire, too, right? Really keeping that pressure on Halzerk, making sure that Short was compromised. JT had a hell of a chance off of sandbags, but he died with nothing. Yeah. That's what let the bomb go down. That's what caused the liege to be smoked out of sight. I keep being reminded there's a couple of Danes here on Heroic, you know, because the team got so gutted. Um, but uh, they they have survived and thrived. And I, I keep wanting to say a kick sand again, man. I mean... He's been a great IGL, but I think even as an individual player, he'd be an asset to a lot of teams that we're watching play. His rifle work is superb. So that's one stolen back. Not going to be fun for complexity, but I think they're in a, a good place right now. They can survive this one. Panel touching on Nikodaz and his ability to play the rifle. Screw the op, as far as he's concerned. He'll pull it out when he needs it. Definitely brings value to the table with the Colts as well. The solo pistol player pulls back. JT not wanting to die empty-handed. See if the scout can get anything going. No, sir. Predicted by Shush. So all looks good here for Heroic. I thought he hit it. Eh. <laughs> Not quite. 
Have heroic from exceeded the peak the of the mountains in Norway. <laughs> have they exceeded your expectations yet in Copenhagen? <sighs> Blown them away, man. Oh yeah. Blown them away. I mean, I was thinking about having them go through 3-0. Like that thought was coming into my mind. And you know what? Is it even that crazy at this point in this 1-0 matchup? Like they just keep. They're just exactly as good as they were before the tournament started into winning as much as they should into all their players playing as well as they should. And I mean, even seeing Nikodaz, you know, finally kind of back to his form from Flames. Like in that last match, Nikodaz was critical as an opera. So I think things are going extremely well. I mean, I've been liking for sure what we've been seeing out of Shush. But uh, this game's still a coin flip for me. I think complexity, especially after the pain matchup, I'm like, have a little bit renewed, more renewed confidence, at least for them in this stage, especially with Grim playing a lot better. So I think, uh, but I've said this before, I don't think my issue with Grim has ever been his ability, but right. more so his floor. Okay. So let's see if he can have a, a good threshold of impact here in this very important game. You know, there is this looming cloud as well around all of the teams coming in for top 16 and starting at this point. And I think that a lot of the community would have put complexity as like the number one target of a potential cold start. Yeah. You could argue playing pain was an excellent way to kind of kick off their major run, shake off any rust if there was some. Right now that Halzerk scout does indeed find impact. Follow through from Heroic on the opposite side of the map is looking oh, good. They're using the Spirit Mollies. Great full leg exec. That's the one with the lane open in the back, right? Yeah. Yeah, beautiful, right? Loves for this peak right here from Kixan. If those fires were still burning, he'd still be able to have vision on sight. Nothing like a little utility evolution to remind you that Counter Strike is king. Yeah, and also, no point in inventing. Just steal. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to. Stay on point. Yep. No copyright infringement in Counter-Strike. Yeah, no IP law protecting your smokes, okay? Steal, steal, steal. What is yours is mine. And what is mine is mine. Mikasa, Mikasa. In your casa. So who do you think is going to win the game? Do you think it's just do you think it's going to be heroic? Or? I believe heroic yeah. will win this. Yes, sir. Yeah. I um. I, I mean, I, I came into the stage with no no faith in complexity, but I really that was impressed and liked what I saw. Definitely versus pain. So, you know, they're another team. That even just not even like Grim as individual, not worried about his ability, but his floor. Same thing for complexity. Not worried about their ability on a good day. They can beat almost anyone. We've seen that over yep. the last few months for sure. Just about doing it doing it a lot. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think, I mean, Heroic are just having a great 2024. The signs of their ability were early on. And every time you're sat here being impressed by Heroic, you think, well, surely there's going to be some cracks now. Yeah. That that momentum can't be followed forward. Yet here we are at the second stage of the major, and they're on the brink of going 2-0. Still frying. And on top of that, they're nice and warmed up. They went 3-0 in the first segment, a couple days off to get some practice in. But right now, we've got their hands full as Complexity try to fight on ramp. It'll cost them two and the third. Nikidos, doesn't matter what he's swinging with, his guns hit hard. And Heroic, a 3v2 to try and follow forward with. Alij pressuring with the flashbang to get himself out into the sights. But he doesn't take the full chance. And holds off. There will be the question of the retake. Floppy getting a glimpse of the bomb site, but they could all peek him in a moment, and the trade potential is high. Him and Alige joining up on the doorway, gonna try to get the retake going. Floppy takes the front end. Alige looking to support. That's two positions confirmed. Nikodos though could catch them all off guard. They clear the planter. Nikodos still up close, <laughs> catching Alige on the end of a reload and forcing Floppy, who can clutch, to come forward. Time is of the essence. He's gonna put that smoke on top of bomb and fake it. A second fake, he gets his frag, oh, but there no is no kit for the defuse, and so heroic, it's a costly fourth round yeah, win. Yeah, yeah, it's expensive, but it's worth it. Worth every penny. Floppy can run with a the gun. They've got the four rounds here, and an excellent start. Getting Vertigo, vertigo again, that's uh, Eternal Fire, who I think start, started out the exact same way. The CT's clawed back into the game. It's never too late.
really can come down to who's just more resilient, who's got the better floor. In the most recent heroic game on this map versus Eternal Fire, as you bring them up, that was a nine round T side that they were able to post. And even then, mm -hmm. that game ends up going into overtime. So there's a small question mark around their defense. But with the nature of these wins, with the complexities economy on the ground at the moment, it is looking par for their previous course. And they're concerned about Elysia's spot. Oh, oh that my crouch. god, he still got the kill? Come on. And I know Elish. He's pissed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how mad you can be. Crouching he, he, under the deagle. He shot. probably would've got him on his next bullet, you mm -hmm. know, so. Yeah, yeah, no, sharp shooting from Kicksan. I mean, it, it's no coincidence he crouches. That's exactly what he's trying to do. And then he gives us the 180 flick around, so. Showing us that he can call and kill. And that's really been something, I think, that has been an uptick since his inclusion in Heroic. Back on Apex, we knew the calling was strong. We'd see glimpses of his individual level, but I feel like he's even better now that he's on Heroic. He is fragging harder. Yeah. In interviews, he said his confidence has gone up as a caller, but he said that he feels like he can do more of whatever he wants. I mean, of course, he accumulated so much experience on that old lineup learned and had lots of mistakes with them. And sometimes it's great for an IGL to actually move to a new team every once in a while before they become veterans and figure out their style. Because as an IGL, you have to make lots of mistakes. You're going to make mistakes managing personalities. You're going to make mistakes figuring out what your play style is. And while that all happens, sometimes your teammates can lose faith in you. Or sometimes you just get into a rut that you can't get out of. And all you need is a change of scenery. With all that experience you take from the past, you leave all the mistakes behind, all the baggage behind and you come through with a lot more confidence, you know? I think like in Kerrigan's career, that's happened to him, where uh, in the early days, it was a lot of, and so many people just weren't around at this point to to remember that, but there's a lot of choking, uh, a lot of like teams where it felt like the leadership wasn't strong enough. And now, of course, like look at him, like ever since this lineup where he won Antwerp and Twist was on the roster. And even after bad losses, you know, Twist like my captain, I, I support you and everything. And everyone stands behind him in such a massive way. And he's a guy who's just used so much experience and gone through a few different lineups and come out ahead every single time because he's built on it, learned from his mistakes. And I think that's the hardest thing to cheat uh, when it comes to getting better in any role in Counter-Strike as an IGL. It's, uh, you can really tell when someone's had a lot of years under their belt. But uh, when we look at Kixan, we just look at someone who's learning fast. Somebody who has a great mind with him to help, right? We talk about Saw in the coaching role. We talk about the aggression in this one. Straight up into the boost is Grim. Tess is looking for this. Keeping his head on a swivel. Not to mention a gap on the smoke for Nikodos to try and get around. How long do they hold this? And a question as to whether it can come back to haunt them. JT takes a leave of absence, departing towards middle. And the T is creeping up without being spotted. Little utility pressure from Tess He let his guard down. A spot he was watching. Comes back to get him. Shush activates and takes <laughs> Floppy out right before getting burned. That's yeah. a nice kill from Shush. And watch out for Shush to dominate that B site, T and CT side. Yeah, true, man. No one better to watch than Shush on B site of Vertigo. He is the one writing the textbook for modern CS, in my opinion. So, yes, he knows he knows all the gaps as well when it comes to the T approach. Definitely a threat as an individual lurk. But Complexity have found themselves in a very favorable spot. I mean, it's 35 seconds. They have retake utility. They have a kit in place. They just don't have any HE or Molly to slow down the bomb. So we'll see how aggressively they want to play this defense. And, oh, Grim nice. come, someone come up on the side. Ooh, the trade comes down. But then they let that guard down. Halzerk able to track Kicksan as he jumps over. Nertz, it's a 1v3 attempt, but Nertz, known for a clutch, Fakes it a second time to elicit some kind of a peek. JT doesn't give it to him. Now Elise starting to make sound. It's a third fake, and it's one that Elise will punish. Mm. No bomb plant for Heroic. And I think you painted the picture perfectly. They had all they still needed to hang on with. Yes, okay, no utility to do damage, but the guns shoot straight. Yeah, like Grim, it looked like for a second he was going to fall with nothing, but that short peek into his reaction was nice. His aim was so good, and, it, you know, you don't really want to plan to have good aim, but with someone like Grim, you want to, like, you do want to assume they're going to out-aim people because, like, 
That's the kind of guy he is uh, when he's having a good day. He's winning tough fights. And yeah, that, that situation, if they had an HE and a Molotov and a man advantage, they could have played back and delayed for time, outlived smokes, and then pushed in together. But in this situation, they have the material advantage, no HE, no Molly, then playing within smokes is great, just trading down into the exact position we just saw where Nertz is in a 1v2. Because he has no room to plan, no smokes down, no way to trick anybody. And the time on the CT side. Great to see the old school jerseys in play here for complexity. Didn't know that was going to be possible. Right. So, but now that Jason Lake has just sort of bought back the team and owns it himself, mm -hmm. um, now he can do whatever he wants. Death taxes and Jason Lake owning complexity. The three constants of Counter Strike. Go for this aggressive mid setup. Tess says, wow, man. making sure that smoke stays honest. But Elige there and supported. But with that mid presence, check this out. Heroic, they're eyeing up the B site while they throw another body at this A ramp, right? Tess says, he did his job. He got his pick. The middle players separate, leaving Halzerk as a solo op in B. This sandbags play. They're getting real close. Grim swings, Woo! and that'll catch the single player from Heroic on that half of the map. Kicksand's been boosted up behind the wood wall. Halzerk about to have his hands full. And no teammate here to help him. If he can drop one, that would have been great. But he loses his head to the first bullet of Shush, who we tried to highlight as a problematic player for complexity when it comes to this half of the map. Kicksand brings one with him. And Shush, multi-frag. Stuffing Grim back into his spawn and forcing him to try to piece this one together. Now there's no rush. Yeah. Put the smoke out. Grim goes for the peak. He sees him. A sliver, a shadow. Oh, can he get any damage off? I don't know, but he knows that he can push through the smoke behind Jenny is clear. Sir, that's positioning. That's positioning on both players. So he comes out looking for the quad player. Grim getting close. A silent Ooh! approach. Oh! All right. A tidbit of info and he cuts them both down. That's good, man. Grim is cooking today. That's a good clutch. Obviously, with the information that he had, he played it perfectly. Aim does the rest. What you want to see out of Grim. Great presence of mind. And, once more, sharp shooting. Over towards that A play, coming out of Sandbags. Gets himself the instant headshot. Puts Complexity's third round to the board. And this is going to keep Heroic honest. Money in their back pockets, but by the nature of the B, collapse. All of a sudden, you thought that round could have been done. Shush, burnt to a crisp. Mm. Burnt down to a quarter. That's some crispy Christmas pork right there. Halzerk, no longer playing with the op, and honestly concerned about Tessas, understandably. Over the top of Xbox goes Nikodos, and down to the hands of Halzerk. Showing that both these oppers can swing with M Force. Yeah, true. Extremely well done here from Halzerk. Saves the situation. Look at the CTs. They would have been no position to retake if he had died. Needed to get both and got him. Peeling out this A site to see if they can get the opening. It's going to be a long ladder flank. Oh, but Halzer, okay. his third kill on the round. He has done everything inside of this A site. Shush barely standing. He's just going to try to get that plant down. No nade except for on Grim. So, Yo. Grim is in position. And Halzer's shot's not too far away from it. The flank is fantastic. And Shush, it is desperate times, which call for desperate measures. Overwhelmed by that pack of players. A beautiful quad out of mm. Halzer. And he had to pick up that slack because, remember, he lost his teammate with that climb from Shush over Xbox. Yeah, both kills on ramp means that his teammates don't have to rotate, frankly. He said, get me my damn keystone. I got this. Spiritual American member of complexity. He's been playing in the region for quite some time. Not as long as JT and Coach TC. Definitely long enough to be one of us.
made a name for himself in Swedish Counter-Strike, playing with some legends. Yeah, that was a crazy opportunity that he had with, with Dignitas to like garner some experience. Mm -hmm. And he always seemed like a character back in the COVID online era. He's become himself proper in complexity. Alij, hands full towards mid, double peak. And it's a beautiful trade from Kixan. Hot on the heels of Nerds, he makes sure that there's a hole in the defense here, and it's going to be dealt with by the elevator rotation. They pulled two players off A because of the forward setup on short side. Oh, man. Oh, his floppy didn't see anything right there, but uh, his gun might betray him. But it doesn't seem like yet, actually. Shush is cautious on the approach. The rotators come in, but now they could still fall victim to floppy. He's been spotted out and softened up. JT, a double kill, and both headshots. Molotov's thrown towards Floppy's last known position. He just shuffles Woo! outwards and in doing so holds them off. And Moses brought this up on the desk prior to the game going live, right? This impact that we've had from JT as of late. We'll see if Tess S can knock him down a peg. They're all here ready to go. Oh, nice tap. No flick though. Halzerk and Floppy gonna keep this one in control. And JT with a highlight moment. Yeah, that was a well-functioning B site. Um, of course, Floppy is is spotting periodically, but he doesn't want to show himself because if he does, then he gets mollied and he has to use an aid and then he goes into like a turtle setup where he can't really fight back that well. So he's just hoping and, and just making sure no one can walk up onto the site. His teammate dying is fine because he's set up perfectly thereafter. Uh, they get that flash so he can transpose to push forward, fight the B steps. They keep that man advantage to keep the flashes going high and over and they never really lose control of the B side. Well, there's been a lot of action top ladder here between Elysia and Nerds. What are you made of Elysia's CS2 performance? Because some say top five CS2 player. Obviously, early on, we have to wait those results. Yo. But man, he has been consistent. Cleaned up shop at the America's RMR. Ooh, JT giving us another one versus the Pistols. But yeah, I thought, you know, Elige departing Team Liquid, joining Complexity. If you're Jason Lake and Elige becomes a free agent, mm -hmm. you have to jump on that. Yeah, initially I was like, oh man, they must have just shelled out like so much money to be able to afford, you know, what Liquid could offer him. And he said, well, no, actually, I took a pay cut to come to Complexity. So not only did he take a career Jason risk Lake leaving an established team, you know, that have won him all his trophies and was the team only team he's really played on at this level, but he kind of, he moved to a team that he knew that he would have to be the reason that they won. You know, he's not moving to a team to surround himself with star players that are going to teach him the game. He realizes at this point in his career, there aren't many players in NA, if any, that can teach him uh, about how to improve. And so he, him sharing uh, trade secrets from the way Liquid playing, sh sharing sort of the mentality of how to be a champion, I think he knew he had all that as a cross to bear in this risk of going to complexity and he was willing to go to the challenge and he rose to the challenge. And unfortunately, since then, it, coming you know second to phase at Sydney was sort of the best result that they've had on this roster. You do have to be careful with the amount of times that you get close because it doesn't mean that you're going to get closer and eventually win. You could just fall off. And um, uh, complexity have not actually achieved the result of getting that trophy on this roster. But it's very clear by how well he plays and how much effort he puts in every single round and how consistent he's been in this game that he is there for the right reason, playing to win and getting complexity on the right track. Yeah, giving them a taste of near victory comes with confidence as well for the other pieces. I think one of the best things about the complexity addition of Elige was the level he got out of floppy originally. Every North American player content to sit next to a liege and chase the dream of hosting trophies. Especially if they're from Boston. Yeah. <laughs> I want them MVP medals, a couple trophies. Uh, put them in a case, John. Back it up. Let's get some oysters. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Crack a brew with old Halsey over here. <laughs> yeah, damn right he's Maybe ready. Watch some Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> I'm like the dumb version of Matt Damon. Man, if Complexity hadn't lost the second round of this half, 
curious how many Heroic would have ended up getting because it's been activity from Complexity round after round. Look at this Elyse flank. Poor Shush is going to walk into his own death, never sees it coming, hit like a truck. And now Heroic's execution into the A site, all that they have left, has been read like a book. Double nades from JT again, and he is here to clean up with Halzerk. A hell of a recovery from Complexity. They go down 1-5 after winning Pistol and just sweep this CT side right back. No kidding. It's never too late, man. They, they stayed focused that entire time. They played some great CS there. And they really slowed Heroic to a crawl in terms of their intention was, I think, to keep that half very fast the entire way through. They earned that right after the first five rounds, gained a lot of momentum, could take some shortcuts. But then they started losing their individual duels and defaults, and they had to respect that complexity. We're ready to fight back uh, against them. And I think it starts mechanically, right? You have to stop a team that's going to run at you very fast, win some hard duels you're not supposed to win, then you earn their respect, then you slow them down. But then we went to the next level where they leveled up as a team as well and stayed consistent all the way through. So great climb back for complexity, but you know, we know it's not a complexity game unless it's close. So classic game, certainly not over yet. And Heroic are very stiff competition right now. Feels like that is some of the scarring that our region has had to deal with in trying to cheer for complexity is they'll get your hopes up, they'll make things feel close. This team has had to go through a lot of heartbreaks throughout 2023, especially towards the tail end of CSGO with close results that could have been something special but weren't. And that's why we stopped talking about it. Get it over the line or go home. the Molotovs, the USPs of Shush. Oh, they're slowing them down so much. Looking to stuff them on the stairs, Oof. which they are. Two kills for Heroic. Looks real good. Elise trying to recover with something. Oh, that's so frustrating. But the lurk in place from Grim, he could change things. Spotted out. There's two here for him. He will bring one out of this. Yeah, that And then works. they're going to go for the boost on the B steps. Elise looking to re-engage. Nice angle from Nerds, oh, but Elyse... the way he approached that. He's reopened this bomb site wonderfully. Kicks down low health, gets oh. his answer back, and it's going to have to be JT. Known to be a demon with a pistol. Best deagle in our region, but the Glock doesn't quite pack the same punch. Two enemies still ahead of him. One on low health, and it's on the reload. Mm. Tess smells blood in the water, chases him down, and with that smoke smirk, knows... This is Heroic's chance to bring back the game. Yeah, and then, you know, there are moments where you see a player like Tessus keeps, keeps Heroic of old within him. Like, they're ready to chase down frags if they need to. Shush has shown that he is a two-way player in the sense of being able to play slowly, play quickly, aggressively and defensively. And uh, they're, they're still on the same page in that regard. Um, they definitely evolved perfectly with the old pieces and the new ones. And, uh, well, a second pistol means they're going to be smiling from ear to ear about being able to play CT side, especially on this anti-eco. Tech 9's barreling towards them. Grim shut out of it real fast. Wow. And then a little pressure from Tess S to clean up with the SMG, make some extra money. All is good. Man, so, you know, that last round was a really good way to exemplify when you fight a little bit versus, versus an execute that's coming in. That can mess anything up. Like JT's execs from the stairs are perfect, right? All the mollies that they have for the site hits, everything they need to scale. It's like everything is very orderly when it comes to a JT execute. And if a timing is blocked because someone's on the half ball or peaking or not dying, suddenly the flashes you throw are completely useless. The mollies will expire. And then you are left with players who are unarmored, no, uh, uh, no utility left over. And your game plan is fully exposed, so that was just such a good way for Heroic to defend in that last round. So you're saying you just have to kind of get complexity off kilter. Yeah, especially, again, the teams that are strict. I think strict has really fallen out of favor. I wouldn't call it strict, by the way. I'd call it thorough. But moments like that, full execs, you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's really good to play by the front door on full execs instead of playing back. They try to go for the ramp hit. Kicksand taking that one up. Dropping the chance. Now, this MP7 off angle. We saw the bullets coming through the wood, whizzing by Nertz as he stayed stoic. 
Nothing more deflating than getting smoked out here. We see we passed the minute mark. You've got to re-clear things. CTs are still looking down. Prying eyes here from above. Ooh, oh, man, nice and shots. Nikodaz, he has been making his M4 look like an op. Yep. Laser beam and fully focused. We get that rotation back from the teammates. Trying to scramble into the A hit. But Complexity have to be a little cautious on the approach because for all they know, shorts compromised. Sandbags could be preoccupied. So they'll get that ramp control. With this volley of utility, try to puncture through in the 4v4. There's a few lesser weapons for Heroic to deal with. But Sight Control, the name of the game. Halzerk, he'll catch Tessess through the smoke. And Nikodaw is going over, doesn't stop the plan. He gets the fight towards short, queued up, killing Grim. Halzerk next up with the answer. And as he tracks through smoke, Ooh. it's a multi-frag from Halzerk. Not the only opera who can rifle. Yeah, that's true. Once again, answering back like so many rounds back and forth. And Nerds, who oftentimes can be a lurk, hanging out because there's a better gun sitting here on jump up. Oh, but they push elevator. He's done. Oh, okay. Nicely no. done. Halzerk thriving in the chaos and keeping majority alive. Yeah, it's great to see Halzerk. It's great to see Grim earlier today. These are the two players who I think are sort of putting the floor in question for complexity and on the biggest stage, they are showing up. It's actually insane that they did that after having to walk through a smoke at the bottom of A ramp, past a minute mark, into the A exec, and uh, Nikodos gets another kill. Final timeout coming through from Heroic. Yeah, they're forcing the gears to turn. Greatest American Counter-Strike player of all time. The figure that head wasn't of Stewie, bro. What yeah. Are you talking? Okay. Okay. Oh. Whoa. Okay. Punished. Nice recovery. JT tried to get it going. The boost oh, man. up denied. Shush is not going to let you take this bomb site. Look at where he stands. Wonderful third kill from Shush. Just. Art, okay, the way that he plays this site, it's beautiful. His positioning is just perfect. Oh, but Holzerk on the recovery. He's been posting multi-frag after multi-frag. Even despite not having the big green, Kixan behind green holds. Flash misses, Holzerk does as well. That could have been the big one. Yeah, that was a good play. I mean, the flash was set up right, of course. Grim, though, 1v2, cuts it down. Looking for the second swipe of the scythe. Kicks in in the oh. open. Closes it out. And Heroic are going to tie this game up at eight apiece. They better bless Shush for that one. A triple kill hold after losing the player through the wood wall. Mm -hmm. How easily that site and round no. could have fallen to complexity. Everything about the way that Shush plays this site needs to be studied. And if you're not really, then you're losing. I mean, he can play that perfect balance between someone who's too passive and goes quad every round and someone like Donk who's always swinging. Like, look at how his sort of zone of traffic is just, just one line in the back of the site, and yet he's covered all the time by double stack on one of the boosts. He's ready to take an unfair fight versus the wood wall. He can switch to the stairs. He has so many options to not only be in cover in a site that's one of the most open sites in the game, and then also have very good fights to the CT side, and at the same time be supported. I really don't think the way that the best players are playing the site right now are tucking and, and uh, picking timings to go for swings uh, behind, hot, behind hardcover where they can't update information. And yet Shush manages to have his cake and eat it too because it looks like he's being very aggressive, but he's really hard to find. It's that beautiful balance of elusiveness and yet confidence that I think only comes with the success of being a player like Shush, specifically in this position. You start to grow an aura about yourself. And he gets away with a robbery. Elige over the top of the Xbox. He knows there's a second player short with an empty mag. Whoa. And Elige and JT 
will just churn through that A defense. Heroic wanted a fight, Launders. They went yeah. into it, they took the first swing, and they get knocked on their ass in round 17. Yeah, that was a strong punch with a great follow through right there. Sight gets trampled, bomb goes down, no chance for the retake. Again, Nurt scratching his head as a rotator, and Shush with nothing to do. He can be as good as he wants, but they know that he's going to be on B. I think the question is like, can, you know, how many times can they go A? They're willing to do it. It's actually a really, really important save here for the CT side. With the money as low as it is, it gives them any chance to fight back in this next round. Otherwise, Complexity would have their way with it. I think this is turning into the game where anti-ecos, you take it to the B site, and then A site on all of the full rifle rounds, and then you just dress it up with a fake at the end, so you... You pretend that you're willing to go B, but you really only do it versus weak buys. That side of the map is tough to deal with, but right now all of Heroic's problems are truly on A. Man, Elise, take a bow for that one. In the chaos and pressure of the short push with the spam on the smoke, he comes in with those two kills, climbing over Xbox. And I thought he'd get caught with the crane swing, right? That third piece of the defense, I thought, is what maybe catches him back, gets the trade frag, but the smoke pops open and Elise still wins a duel. Now they've got an interesting question to ask themselves because they, they know that money's not going to be great here for CT. But Look how there's chaotic this is. Still saved guns, yeah. And that's really the perfect spot for a leash to be in. Demanding aggressive, frantic positions. Very far pushed up on T side. Oh, look at the state of heroic. Look at this force buy. Look what it nets them. Yeah, but they, 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 they do have a gun on. Well, actually, Shush is, Shush is on MP9, obviously, a little bit more viable on the B side, so... Nikodaz will pick up the M4. And I think they have to ask themselves, do they think they're going to find Shush on B, and do they want to use this round to go there to sort of check him, because they need to put his confidence in place. On one hand, this would be the round to do it, this would be the buy to punish, but Ramp has been going so swimmingly. Almost magnetizes you back at it. And Elise wastes no time whatsoever. Locking it into yellow, timing it perfectly. Kickstand here is locked in. The smoke pops, but the Nikodaz support is exactly what they needed. Tess grabs the AK, oh. but in that moment, it gets cleared out by JT. Just when you think you get an extra tool to work with, you walk into the middle of the road and JT hits you like a truck. Now Shush, excellence on that B site. Can he contest it? Oh, he gets the kill no and way. burns him. What a 1v2. Are you kidding? He can come over and put a cameo down on the A site. He can't just play B all this time and let the A site get taken over and have nothing to say about it. That's an unbelievable clutch from him. With the gun that he, he gave away his M4, took the MP9 and still had some utility in his back pocket for a rainy day. That was a beautiful round out of Shush. What a humble king, man. You can run, but you clearly can't hide. Yeah. He will hunt you down. And that poor bomb planter had nowhere to go. Yeah. That was, you know, just as we left this perspective, I didn't think he was going to win that fight either, right? Like he's fighting versus the ramp on a headshot angle with an MP9. And as we can see, it's both kills for one right there. That's nuts. Oh, that is a spicy round. Oh, man. Round 18, don't forget it. Because the implications are money back in the hands of heroic full buys. Oh, that is brutal for Complexity. It just like tore through that. And that is a tremor. The Complexity still have to waddle through. Shush, who else? N.A. Slayer. Tucks back into the B site, his safety net, but without early Aggression down to the steps. This is three players kind of stuck into the B half of the map, right? You can't depart. And if Complexity can find a road over towards A, in contrast, this could open doors. But that pressure out from mid recedes into top middle. And then they come back at this. Heroic clearing out mid at a moment where Complexity could actually get active and maybe clip their wings, maybe catch the mid-rotation. They could shut the door behind them right here. I mean, even a smoke to wrap. They just don't know where the CTs have gone to. This is a Heroic-esque round. This call, oh. this call is excellent. 
This is JT letting them leave, get out of that bomb site without knowing everything, and now they're gonna have a genuine 1v5 versus Nurse's MP9. He takes one, but that is it. Wow. Falling off middle, ensuring that complexity can't be found as heroic go to clear, mm. because early contact was shown, and then this aggressive peek out to the spawn. Crazy. They just outplayed them. Yeah, that's, look at that. It's basically a pacifist round, right? The round is won before Nurtz even makes contact with anyone. There's no way he gets five kills with his MP9. So that one is one in prep, where they get set up and staged perfectly, and they get heroic to their honeypot on the A site. There's nothing there. Okay. Interesting after, rounds. After losing that last uh, anti-eco, I mean, that would... That's a, you know, we play a lot of Counter-Strike around here. The beauty of CS is every round is always a little different. That's a unique one. Early showing in middle to get heroic, to go find you. And your decision to give away map control you earn for free has them trip over their own two feet. Yeah, that's a big gulp for Heroic. Great call here from JT. Good staging. Good composure. They don't overplay the situation. Don't make any noise whatsoever. And Nurtz is actually having a lot of trouble getting into this game. He was sort of getting outdone by a liege in the first half. But now that we're on CT side, as a rotator, he hasn't got that much action, and when he has, it hasn't gone that well. He's been so consistent as a fragger for Heroic, set up to be a star, and actually been delivering consistently. Gush on Shush. You've got him weak. That's exactly what you need, early damage, to maybe get through this site. And sure enough, dead oh. with nothing. JT catching the rotate and complexity on the highway to 11. Yeah, they had half a buy right here. And now their rotators can't even come in. That op is going to be saved in this round. Complexity will get to 11. Hard fought, well earned. And only gaining momentum. And did they get cleared out? Nerds is looking for something. Yeah, finds the gun. And we'll be able to fall back to say, okay, this game's not over. We'll be back. You won the battle, but not the war. Another great call here for Complexity. Full B exact taking over the site. Terrorists win. The amount of rounds Complexity have actually been able to win with still five players up too, right? These half buys, they haven't worked for Heroic. And we've seen the threat of their pistols and half buys find success in games prior here in Copenhagen. Mm. You know, Heroic is a team that always makes you believe that little bit more when they have a half buy. Because it does feel like they still have the remnants of Heroic, right? Where they can thrive in chaotic moments, where they can cause carnage. But right now, they can't touch complexity. They're going to go for the boost with the M4, right? This is the M4 Nurts was able to save from the smoke. Worked hard to grab this, but doesn't make much happen. Uh. And JT doesn't shy away from that fight. JT just dukes it out with Nertz and his teammate in this bomb site and feel how uncomfortable they are. Nertz just stuck here on this line. Elise comes climbing over the wood wall. Nika Dog with the off, having to do something special. His teammates fall empty handed. He goes deep for the quad <laughs> peak, can't nail the shot. And with that bomb goes down. Complexity on the brink of confirming a 12th. They arrive in Copenhagen, marred in some controversy. A team that gets the one America's legend spot Despite losing to Furia on their road at the RMR, they show up with critics calling for them to possibly fall out 3 and instead they will have three rounds here to go 2-0 with a phenomenal first day of the very first CS2 Major while draped in those legendary complexity colors. Yeah, absolutely. And it is a half investment for Heroic. They were hoping to win this round with that tactic. They couldn't figure it out but they still have enough money to put together a buy for this next one. In a three round game, Complexity have a massive opportunity, but again, how many games do we see like this that get too close for comfort? They know that Heroic didn't fully invest, so they're gonna be half happy about this. They realize that there's still a full buy coming in, and uh, these last two rounds have been shining moments for Complexity in terms of ideas, and obviously when this boost falls apart, it's so awkward. <laughs> You're, the guy underneath you is running away and just falls 
falls shooting from behind the double stack. So will this be the last round is the question. No op in play here for the CT side. But we know that Nikodaz can swing that M4. Grim holding back into Liege, looking for the fight. They were just here, and they're ready to come back at it. Nikodaz, wonderful 2K, but it does cost them short side. His rifles has been so sharp, and it's additional damage for Floppy to feel up, but Elyse is here, and Elyse is the difference maker for complexity. Tessess attacks from the short side, takes him out of this one, and Floppy with a little bit of health is waiting for support. Grim gets caught to CT, and Floppy goes down. Heroic double digits, not done yet. Yeah, I don't know if there's an op to pick up. Hauser didn't have one in this round, right? So we'll see if they even want to try to buy it. Again, Nikodaz, does he need one? Spray transfer with the M4 on the ramp. That's been a key spot for him over and over again. He's gotten so many multi-kills in this half. You can see Kicksand sitting up straight. There is an opportunity at hand to make this comeback possible. I think the one massive weakness that we've seen Complexity exploit is inside middle. And the B-splits are starting to work out. It's aggression fast. Trying to take it to Shush. Floppy on the entry, dies out. 5v4 looking great for Heroic as they can just lean into the site now. Yeah, I think they just, they wanted to try to gamble one frag in that situation. If they take Shush out early, then it's such an easier site to take later. Just ruins the structure on the CT side, but it's Shush to come out ahead this time around. Smoke grenades allow for Nerds to slide in behind Tetris. You said it earlier, it's not a complexity game unless things get close. Yeah. And every risk is a calculation. But just because you lose on that, there has to be another layer to the plan. You cannot simply give up because it's 5v4. So what is it, JT? Because right now, they're staring at the face of three CTs inconspicuously posted up in the B site, ready for an exec to come this way. And we see the intention of complexity right now. Yeah, they're walking into the pitfall. Trap's been set and they're about to spring it. Nerds flushed out of a couple forward spots. The flashbang from the CT spawn soon to come out. Nice opening from JT. He does what Floppy couldn't in getting that entry. Pressure towards Quad. They've got a player stuck in that smoke. Nerds is known. Meanwhile, so many other rotates that it seems the CT should be able to hold. Holzerk dodging these gunfights. The assistance comes out from Grim. Nikodaz again in with the double, oh. and Grim gets stopped. Is this guy an opper or the best <laughs> rifle on Heroic? Because oh goddamn, God it's consistent. Yeah, he doesn't. I mean, you give him as much money as one. He could just get him for us and drop him all half long. It's crazy. It's not even a feature of the CT side at all. That's unreal work by him. Not only this game, but last map, too. All the time. Yeah, that's a close round. And uh, Complexity nearly fought their way back into a 4v5. They got so obsessed with Nerds and the smoke, and they knew that there was a chance to get him spamming as he was running back and forth, and they had him so low. But it did slow down the scale. It did a give time for Nikodaz to make his way over towards the site. And now, round 24. Straight back in. Tessef has the angle. Elise gets the kill, but now he's onto the sidelines. And Complexity having to forego a bit of control of ramp early. You run back that last round, you can't blame them for getting concerned of Nerds and Smoke. At a moment's notice, he comes swinging, just like now, posted on the gap of middle, Okay, awaiting Nerds is this walkout. Nerds out. is 5 and 16 on a good angle, gets his first and a second frag as well with the bomb down. All he needed. All rounds lead to this one. And while boosted up, he holds the line. Surely pushing Heroic into overtime. While Halzer creeps up onto the A play, he's lost his teammate towards B. The bomb possession still on the other side, but look at this situation we have. He saw him. There That's it is. all they need. We Had they not spotted that, things get weird. Instead, it's Heroic. Supposedly. Call it, Connor. Call it. Supposedly locking it. in OT, but they've also given away the bomb. They have. Hulzerk has had high highs and low lows in this complexity jersey. Distance in between the three players left. He gets oh, another headshot. Okay. He is halfway through this 1v4. He has time to go back to A. The player sits inside of the B site towards Tetris. He can smell it. It could be a costly mistake choosing B. Not that he gets to know, but a Molotov. 
That's perfect. Perfect for the Tetris oh. player. He was piecing it together, but Heroic holds on. Whew. And of course, it's not a complexity game unless it gets close. Unless it gets close, baby. That's just the way it is. Man, that Nerds was 5 and 16 and got the 2K spray down in mid. And again, I love the idea from JT because that's where they got some of their more, most dangerous rounds out on T side. Jeez, Hauser was very close to being able to win that. He would have known that the last player was waiting on the flank probably for the fallback at ladder yep. or inside of mid and uh, really had a good inventory of what he had to go up against on the map with the right utility to do it. But doesn't win the trade, of course. Shush, put, Shush puts up another good hold. But got to say, they were formidable when it came to dealing with Shush and also brave about going back towards him You know, after that great defense that he put up earlier on on the half. They didn't run away from their problem, but we are also now in overtime. And immediately wow. into their only timeout wow. as we get into overtime. I get it. You want to start off right, and you are also on T-side. Such close situations. If it wasn't for absolute peak rifling for Nikodaz in a couple of moments, this game would be over already. I love the fact that we've been talking about Nikodaz on the rifle, and then we get this clean attempt out of Halzerk in the last round as yeah. well, right? His HSP on the AK has been solid. True, they've both been great on the rifles. Which isn't really something, you know, I tout Halzerk for, but... Trying to match up to his counterpart in this head-to-head -head with Heroic. Nerds so active. Oh man, this is this is an amazing idea. I think to try first. If they if he, it's all or nothing, right? I mean, Alicia has been killing him inside of ladder, but he's let one go by. Uh, Grim, Grim leaning back. Right, uh, someone's gonna die because of this. You know, unless someone gets lucky and watches the flank, Nerds has sort of free reign to catch people off. But also at the same time, really waiting to make this move. He's now starting to get active. It's a long road if you're going to make zero sound. But because of the and utility it, usage it, outside of B, you don't want to do. You don't if you're. <gasps> let's say going B, right? You don't want to throw too much utility in this direction. So people are always facing forward. Let nerds do the rest. Floppy and JT are going to be the victims of this. Grim, oh. unfortunately, letting one slip through the net. Now nerds. He's going to wait to see what else. Gets oh. himself both. Wonderful rifle work from Nertz. What a time to get back in the game. Three players left on the A site, 45 seconds. They can still win. Sure, but it's going to take a clean execution and somebody to pick up slack. Double man disadvantage. Grim hands busy on the plant. That's an interesting smoke gap, though. Alish, he's in the middle of it all, right? These three smoke grenades creating the smallest oh. of pockets. But Tess has that game sense to shoot through. So bombs down, but it's going to be tough. Nertz still on the flank. Coming back at this ramp attack. Halzerk exposed, instant headshot. Nerds with three kills to be proud of in this round. And then disappears. Bomb's pretty far gone, but it's covered in the smoke and covered in the CTs as well. A flawless opening to the CT side of overtime. Oh, that's brutal. Thanks to the Nerds top mid yeah, push. Yeah, because they had a full default on A, B, and mid, and Grim just got up the ladder late. They used the spawn to their advantage. And listen, it looks like genius, but it's also a risk, right? When Nerds come out, comes out this quickly to walk by ladder, hoping that they aren't going to default here, Complexity have done a good job of conditioning Heroic to believe that they are going to be holding mid in the default. So, but it's the bravery that pays off. And I think overtime is where you do welcome aggressive pick plays like that after a whole half of being very thorough and careful and reading into your opponent to try to flip the table and change it up completely. Yeah, he's flipping tables and Complexity pounding on them because God, that's gotta be frustrating. You're trying to set up this B fake with two. And all of a sudden, this sinking feeling in the pit of your stomach when the three guys A know that everything is known to Heroic. A deflating start to their overtime endeavor, but... Two more to claw back. Alige, he's been good throughout the map, but there's also been a few rounds where he gets... He's gonna counter now a yep, little bit. on ramp. This time, gets the contact, can't chase all the way forward. And then that next peak is actually caught out by Halzerk. So damage on JT and Halzerk. But at the same time, Complexity will take this 5v4. Yeah. Great body guarding right there. 5v4. And you can see that the 
squeeze on the B defense is loosened. Shush will go into a rotator spot up in heaven and wait and watch mid. See what Floppy or Grim can get going elsewhere on the map. Pressure on construction. You know, Shush right now, he's very far out of it. Found out in the bomb site, a leash. Oh, but Shush took out Grim at the same time. Wonderful grenade out of Kicksan. This is man advantage reclaimed by Heroic. The numbers on the A site spotted. Great spray control from Elise. You expect nothing less. And his Halzerk plants slightly off default. Kixan tries to spray wildly and will not find any damage. No target hit. Another spray. And Halzerk falling back. Catches the smoke oh push. Oh my god. Elise is making the difference in this one, right? Finally given a chance to stay alive late into the round. But a clutch attempt queued up from Kixan. You've got one stuck behind sandbags. And he is on the hunt, on the prowl, with a kit on his back and a flash in hand. Reconfirming Elise is stuck here, but Elise smells blood in the water mm. and comes through with an instrumental moment in OT. Yeah, the lesson learned. Don't let him live too long here for Heroic. And the times they could find him in the opening play, of course, they'll look back on Foundly because uh, a lot of rounds recently, Elise hasn't been able to get his impact as soon as he is able to stay around into this point. Past the 30 second mark, he continues to frag. But they were doing a good job of countering. At least complexity get one back, tie this up 13-13. What a reaction spray from Elise on the player boosted back A site. Just trying to get into the cover. Challenged when he wasn't expecting it Ooh. and recovers. And it nerds on an op, okay, so. They'll have Shush, they'll still give him free reign over the B site. Nerds doesn't have to move since he has this off. They're not coming in with a nade set inside of mid. They're just waiting back and letting Ramp do the rest. Okay. How does Nikodos stick around? It makes no sense. Not only getting that labored kill to Elise, but then the second no. sets up Tess And with that, Nerds can just stay stoic on the angle in mid. Never had to move. May not have to. How, how did Nikodos... You know, miss half his spray, reset. Makes no sense. That had to have been missed shots from Complexity's yeah. behalf as well, right? Yeah, big time. And I mean, those are no chumps down there. You're, you're dueling versus a liege, the best Complexity have. Oh. Nikodaw's just glowing with the rifle. One and as Floppy tries to get into this B hit, the last attempt of Complexity to take a second on this T half. It's damage versus the opera, but he keeps his head down, and Shush is going to make sure that that door on the B site is closed. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy that we're seeing Nerts on the op before you see Nikodaz on it, and it actually works out beautifully. And then on top of that, Nikodaz goes for what? A deep ramp fight? Yeah, he could have done that with the op as well. It's um, maybe a live evolution of roles. Man, who as is we're that? Watching it. That's as a and JT right after, no bullets go right over his head. It's not the time to miss. What a contrast from the round prior where Elise no was looking good deep in the magazine. No kidding. No time to cry about it. Complexity Indeed. trailing by one. Into the defense and Heroic onto the side where they have posted big numbers here in Copenhagen. Vertigo T side has done them well. They're going to start slow and silently. There is nobody inside that B-site. Complexity go for the double lineup middle, and they get fully molotov off of the site. There is nobody there to stop them. These have to be... Just make sure they don't get picked off when the site, come, site hit comes in. Complexity can still pull off a retake. Little utility has been used from the CT side, and they'll start to come in. There that is helps. the one. This ominous mid lurk starts to come out. Floppy getting the better of that one. So yeah, you lost your bomb site, but now you've queued up a 5v3 retake. Tess, Nerds, and Shush look to hold this one off. The construction players come in with the first, and this one seems to be going swimmingly until Nerds comes out and pulls one back. Tess, it's a double kill. As Complexity get corralled into this funnel of a fight in oh. from mid. Total stoppage, unless Holzer can clutch it. And he's got this last one pinned behind box. He knows where you are, nerds. 
and Nertz holds, waiting for the swing. The close approach is key, <laughs> and Holzerk will make sure that doesn't slip through their my fingertips. God. Oh my god. There is an air of discomfort when you get a site that is completely open, and you put the bomb down knowing all the retake utility is still around, right? The reason why you default towards the A site, draw out utility so in the late round it doesn't exist. So you're careful about putting the bomb down, and you do. And then you have the lurk come out and it fails. And then you have another trade within the site that a leash finds, and suddenly Heroic aren't supposed to win this round at all. And then Tessas just starts chopping off heads from the side, and it feels like tragedy is about to strike once again. But finally, Halzerk has his chance to shine, comes through with the AUG, shaves down Nerds, and pushes Heroic into a timeout. And maybe the frustration can subside again a little bit here for complexity. A near two versus five out of nowhere with Tessas pressed close into the retake. Yeah. Because that is the beauty of that closest corner. When there's a lot of guys flooding off of the connector, it's tough to get you out of there. He's got support on the bomb site with him. They come rushing over the waterfall and it almost costs them everything. Complexity tie back up at 14, anybody's game. And for 2-0 nonetheless, to guarantee yourself three best of three opportunities to fight for the Royal Arena. This is a golden ticket, but we've only got one. Wallbang gets a bit of damage onto Grim, indicative of the numbers that Complexity have put inside of the A-site out of the gate. It is indeed four defenders. And with a lot of utility pressure, they don't want Heroic to take this ramp for free, and that opens the door for Grim to take a bit of a gamble, pressing out around so Smoke. They, they peeled all the way back. This is actually kind of scary, the tease. They might think they have completely left instead. They're still waiting. The push comes down, it's punished. No, they have the wrong idea entirely. Heroic will absolutely punish after showing so many players and so much utility. Complexity can't believe their eyes. Smoke wall goes up. Late lurk from middle as well for Nertz. Cued. That gets cleared out. Elise is going to keep his presence of mind, and this deep boost on the backside continues to help the hold. Halzerk on the AUG presses out, catches oh. them with damage, but they're both still alive. Oh my god. And Heroic will always keep fighting. Still though, 20 health between the two of them. There's another smoke for Kixan to try and set up Shush, who has been wonderful everywhere across this map, both sides. 15 seconds to the clock. They have to try to press this in, but it's also going to be costly. Shush looking to go forward with the bomb plant. It's going to be coverage from Kixan to Mantid. There's the pressure out. There's the clear of the okay. bomb site. And there's Complexity's 15. Yeah, it's a call out. It's beautiful here for Complexity after things go nearly. They went South African, okay, down that ramp with JT. <laughs> walking down there to get killed. And then you think, okay, well, man, they have the wrong read. They get outplayed entirely here for Heroic who punish and then come up the ramp. But... Uh, they still are able to hold strong, get the trades. They have the high-low stack on the back of default as well as the back of the site. And the AUG does the rest of the work. This crisscross coverage between Halzerk watching short on the site box, right? Yeah. He has vision just over top of the site while combined with the boost on white. Heroic just walk into two separate angles and it costs them bodies, but at least they afford the full rebuy. Looking to challenge and push us to double OT. Again, you can feel this fight just oh, no. brewing Grim! Oh, oh, oh. Able to snap down on it, kicks and falls! Nikodaz with the AWP has an answer. But there's a chance to depart if you're complexity. Grim will lock into this close corner, and now no longer can he leave. Shush opens up the smoke, goes for the clear, and takes him! That is big! That is right back to a 3v3! He's so good at that, going fishing. Off the breaking open, a smoke into the three on three. Anything goes at this point, complexity have to spread the map. They need to, I think this is the point of the round where you make either the blind gamble, stack towards the site and go for a retake, or you go for the reclear on an A ramp. But I don't know about spreading it just like this. They're kind of hoping it's A, keeping eyes on B at the same time. Floppy's got the smoke, Halzerg starts to come over. 
This is the fourth attempt that Complexity have had to close this map. That sea of utility bombards the B site. This could be Floppy's most glorious moment of the map through and around, but they pop open his cover. They take man advantage, and they could very well take the round with it. Halzerk survives the onslaught, but the frag grenade takes him out. And JT, how much can he do on his own? They've planted their bomb, they've pressed up against him, but they all do have half health. It's a tough one. It's a desperate attempt, but he has to try to fight forward. Close corner could be occupied. It's not. But as he inches closer, that op is already trained on him. One shot, oh. all they need. And Heroic, a fourth save in the face of a complexity win. And we have beautiful use of our new CS2 mechanics on display with the nade blowing open the smoke and the A ramp for Shush to get his first kill into a second one to expose Floppy, who was trying to phase it on the B defense in a situation where they obviously, what we, they could have just stayed behind it and fought from there but they didn't expect a second nade to come out when they were trying to scale because that blowing that nade op that smoke open was optional for the T side to approach. They could have gone in from the outside of the site, but uh, Heroic, again, really playing CS2, and we have seen teams play CS go way too much in this game. Oh, nerds. It's Bloodshed top mid. Grim sees it. Oh my god, he didn't notice it. What? He didn't see- Oh my god, this could turn into a full-on lurk if Nikodaz... This is really dangerous, obviously. Hulzerk's walking out right yeah, into the AK! Oh my god, how did he not see that? Oh, but it still might be okay. Oh god. Maybe not. Now it's a missed chance. You give away the boost as well, right? They know there's two CTs on lane. He goes for the shot and they all die with nothing. This is a calamity inside of the A site oh and it's flawlessness god. from Heroic. Oh, Ooh. oh my god. Let's go! He was so hyper-focused down the ramp, just... Obviously, it was still on his screen for sure. Nikodaz walking right by that, creating a timing for himself. That got Hauser killed. That is nightmare fuel. Yeah, it is. At least it didn't happen last round. We're still at the start of a new overtime. And we didn't get here because they're both playing perfect. Fair enough. It's a good warm-up for the major complexity. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, you skip opening you, stage. You don't do the challenger stage. You got to get all your rounds in now. Yeah, getting their reps in, no doubt. Clean win versus pain to begin the day. You know, in the first day of every stage of the major is always gut-wrenching for some. Everyone wakes up with a clean slate. Wide eyes and high hopes. Next thing you know, you're 0-2 and facing elimination three times. Or in the case of the winner of this match, 2-0. Imagine how great that would feel for Heroic. One round in the lead. JT, oh. bested by Nika Dawes again. Wow. He has been pure value on this rifle. What a ragtag group of gamers Heroic really is, right? The comeback of Nika Dawes. Finding Nerts in this lineup was almost like, oh God, are, are, is, he gonna, is he gonna have his potential wasted? Like there yeah. was question marks around this Heroic when they formed. Yeah, but there was also intention. You know, they paid for Kicks End mm -hmm. to come in from Apex. Yeah, Saw handpicked him. Yes, and so grabbing Saw, Saw picking Kicks End, the scouting done for this team. Nice shot, oh. shush. Elise is gonna get bet. Nope, maybe not. Kicks in. He, he, he eats a blind, flash. Yeah. Nerds, he comes out from middle. A bit of a labored spray, but he will get there. And now Halzerk's flank may have to be huge. Some really good timing on the flank, Nerds. actually, but what is happening right he now? It. He, he hears it. Yeah, he heard Nerds fall. Easy. No way Nerds says anything about this, but now we've got the two T's in sight on full alert. They're concerned that Elise is still close, but he's given over that space. How will he play this with such low HP? With a fake plant first. He will have to squeeze water from stone from this position to be in the most normal rotator spot. If he gets a kill here. Hulzer trying to approach from an unorthodox side, jumping up over. What? Oh, Elise snapshots down. Nikodos, your rifle's been hot, but this is a tough spot oh. and he's gonna fall. Complexity, bring back this round. Wow. An instant headshot from Elise in a position where he had to hit his first bullet. How was kicks and flashed? When he comes around that corner into Elise, Elise just has a grenade out. Yeah.
I mean, it could have been CT or T Flash. After he got his first kill, maybe he was supposed to be turned. It's hard to say. I don't, it doesn't say in the kill feed, does it? Nope. Well, that means he wasn't flashed, Connor, so. But his arms are. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Counter-Strike, don't lie to me. Yeah, well, I mean, that would be a CT flash facing that way, unless it was, like, real early, mm. and then he continued to scale. And sometimes it is still best to keep running and uh, not clog up your teammates who are trying to get in behind you, but uh, either way, that was still around. Heroic could have won easily in that 2v2 with her HP and two CTs in known positions. Goddamn, with that too, Elish sitting on the pretty 30 frags. Crazy to think that after getting this far into another overtime that this map could dictate your major. Mm -hmm. We already have FaZe and Vitality losing their opening game. I mean, we don't even know what's taking place on the other stream right now. <laughs> I have no Either clue what's blood, happening. The bloodbath that must be happening over there, so nobody is safe. No guarantees. We've learned that already. If you hadn't learned your lesson in the opening stage, Top 16's been just as topsy-turvy. Leash concerned about the wide swing out mid, which could very well be going down, but there's a little Ooh, timidness. Good timing. Opens the nade, oh. but doesn't win the fight. Nika Dawes will come out on top, seven health left over. Oh, who's beating him right now? Seven health, but he comes away with another 5v4. Opening duels for Nika Dawes. Flash in, Grim taking the fight. Tess full white. Interesting. I mean, Grim saw Tess leave. Oh no. Bro. Two players here. Grim, this could be huge or... Oh, he walks in right. Embarrassing. Uh. Another one Grim won't be proud of. JT toppled after his one frag. Nice shot from Elise. Second what? kill is three. Just like that. Everybody top ramp said he feels yeah. it. Oh. And he nails it. Tore through him like a piece of paper. What a spray down for Elise. You have to be able yeah. to spray completely blind. That's Jordan with his eyes closed at the free throw line practicing. He said you have to be able to spray completely while blind. And he did it. Johnny jabs with three knockout punches straight to the face of Heroic. Oh my god. <laughs> that second kill is ridiculous. Look at that laser you, focus. You can't even tell that he's blind at that, all. He is. That is a natural born killer. No, that's a trained killer. A champion of practice. And he goes again. A leash comes right back in. And it is just Nurt's opping. It is just not Nikodaz opping in any situation so far this map. It's actually worked out quite well for Heroic. So we reset the energy. Double push down. How's there going to good spot to hold this? <gasps> oh, he loses his duel. And As... no refrag. JT loses to kick San. And Heroic looking to take one back. Bomb in front of them. Floppy on the recovery mission. How much room do they give to him? He's concerned about the close corner and that potential sandbags peak. He's grabbed Bomb. But what are the options? Elise wants to move forward. The one player on Complexity who had the biggest individual boost when Elise showed up was Floppy, no doubt. And now the two of them looking to combine forces here in the fourth round of the double OT. Elise hits the ground, Nurt stoic on the angle, just sat back and waiting. And Floppy looking for some kind of an answer, some kind of highlight reel moment for him. And as he gets closer to sight, he's trying to piece it together. Good chance, as that short player's locked in. 15 seconds to the clock. And Floppy's gonna fake that plant one time, looking for the elevator kill. He had the right idea, but it's heroic with the win. Oh man, they kept up every step of the way right there with the opening kill into the Nerds op on short. So little utility left near the end of the round for any exec to come through. It's actually ridiculous how close this game is in terms of trades. JC's gotta get that one. 
You know, Halzerk puts himself in a good spot to get the kill, for sure. But then you think, if there's anyone else, that's that's got to be guaranteed. 19 to win it. Blind. 18 for another overtime. It'll need to be two straight for either team. And I don't know if you could predict that at this point. You get a lot of space given to them, but do you want to take this test to Shush again? Has he not taught you your lessons yet? A master of the B-Site craft. A jump up, oh. but he loses Nikodos. Shush is still in it, but very much alone. Nerd's trying to rotate out from CT spawn, and Shush will not let this site fall for free. Another volley of utility, and the nade's got his name on it. It's a bit of hesitation as they wait for the second half of their pack to show up. Another popped open nade, oh. and it is Heroic who thrive in those moments over and over. Halzerk with the wide swing, damage through smoke, and oh, what? again through! Halzerk pins him to the wall! And with Halzerk now back on quad, we get this creep out of nerds. He gets the best of the Norwegian, and it falls on the shoulders of Grimm, who, dare I say it, has left his team down oh in a God. few of these rounds already. They never got their plant. He will take his ticket and leave. Oh, I feel like his odds go down leaving the site. It makes it so scary, but planting at the same time would have been terrifying knowing nerds could push at any moment. So much of this match could come down to the way that this is played, and right now, nerds is hedging his bets, playing retake on the B site. He doesn't believe that Grim would leave, but he had the time to do it. So now Nerd, since he wasn't followed, can get this plant off and play it from anywhere. Are we going back to sandbags? Or are we going back to ramp? He goes are forward. we pushing forward with the bomb on default? He hears it. He hears it. Late reaction, but if Nerd isn't ready, Grim just hit the headshot. Oh. A few body spams. All he needs, Woo. Grim with the around the world. And you know in those moments. Yeah, so it's so scary because you know you could be followed back to the A site if a gamble takes place. He has the site to himself, but he knows Nurse is right behind the smoke. It's so hard to know what the correct decision is, but he holds his nerve. That's the key, holds his nerve. The human psyche is a devilish thing. And as he rotated around with 10 health and four sets of eyes on him, knowing the moments that he has maybe let his team down already in this map, he had to pull up and he will. Guaranteeing 18, a sigh of relief for Grimm. In a map where he is still performing, 21 and 22, but that frag right there means more than all the others put together. It's been a forever war here for complexity and heroic in this matchup and Again, CT side has been favorable in certain spots. Are we going to get the Nikodos 5v4 opener with the rifle? That's been a consistent feature. The Johnny Jab spray down with this AK. In a clutch situation, are we going to have a Lurk pickoff on T side? How many ideas do you have left? This is the fifth round Heroic have faced the loss. And they have hung on for dear life in four. Man, Halzer absolutely saved them too. The two kills before Grimm. Laid the finishing blow. While Heroic opens smokes, it's Halzerk who shoots through them. A game of cat and mouse. As the smoke comes down behind JT. Oh, he, he snaps! Over to Shush of all people inside B. And JT's entry could be key. 35 to the clock. A CT scramble out of spawn flashes in the sky! Oh. And it's a leash to snap over while blind! Now just two left, a late mid play, and Complexity who walked into Copenhagen with question marks of five to end with exclamation. Grim, two kills from top mid as Cole go 2-0. 2-0 for Complexity in this stage. And again, after an absolute journey, what a win over Heroic. They had to go through it all to nearly losing in regulation, to forcing an